Okay, welcome everybody. This is uh, a pres presentation about the California Cons Consortium for Equitable Change in Hispanic Serbian Institutions with OER. Um, our acronym is CC ECHO, and this will be our project showcase. So just to introduce myself and Ron, uh, my name is Kelsey Smith. I am the OER librarian at West Hills College in Lemoore, which is in California. And I'm also the project director of CC ECHO. Hi, everybody. My name is Ron Oxford. Uh, I'm a, a librarian, and I'm currently working at the College of Moran and at West Hills College in Lamar. OK, we're going to switch the slide. There we go. So uh, what we're going to cover today is we're going to go over basically what CC ECHO is, um, how it came about, um, the processes and procedures that were developed um, to get make sure that it is a uh, successful project. Um, Kelsey will go uh, pretty thoroughly through the uh, project showcase, uh, which is really the highlight of what we're trying to share here today. Um, we'll also share that the, the projects that are in progress, and there's quite a few of those, um, talk a little bit about the data collection and some of the lessons learned from uh, so far in this project. And uh, hopefully at the end, we'll have uh, plenty of time for questions and answers. So uh, the open uh, uh, textbook pilot grant, if you're not aware of that, there's a link down there at the bottom. And that is a, a really great uh, project that came out of the, the Department of Ed. It, it's been going on for uh, since 2018, and there are 16 projects there. I won't read all of this, but really what it's focusing on is what you can see there highlighted. And um, I really suggest if you haven't had an opportunity to take a look at those those programs, um, just just a few of them besides what we're going to share with you here is like Middlesex College, uh, County College has uh, they're creating 12 high enrolled um, textbooks for STEM and CTE gateway courses, which is a great project. Clemson is uh, creating uh, textbooks for robotics and uh, advanced engineering. And then, um, of course, UC Davis has LibreText, which is a uh, a hub for uh, creation and storage and dissemination of OER. And they've also launched a new project, uh, UC Davis, with this grant, um, the Conductor um, Project, which uh, is a place to manage and uh, project management for uh, OER creation. So it's some pretty good stuff there if you have a chance to take a look at that link and all of the projects that are out there. And the next one. So the goals uh, for what we are concentrating on is to create 20 um, textbooks for high enrolled courses. Uh, we, we did as thorough a job as we could to make sure that we weren't duplicating what was already out there in the high enrolled courses because we wanted to, uh, we didn't want to duplicate anything. So we tried real hard to make sure that they were uh, uh, needed, but there wasn't anything there. Um, and of course, we're uh, it's dealing with textbook affordability and we, we all know the value of it, but we also wanted to put that diversity and equity and inclusion lens on it, um, particularly at, at HSIs. And uh, the next one there is to provide the professional development. So uh, I'm trying to create as many resources as possible for the professional development when you're looking at that DEI lens on OER. And then uh, we'd like to uh, um, share it out to all of the HSIs out there, which is uh, quite a task. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of HSIs. There's 569 HSIs, which is 18% of all of the colleges uh, and universities out there, um, which is uh, <laughs> quite a task to get it disseminated to. But that's that's what we're going to do. And uh, Una just shared in the uh, chat there that, that uh, link down at the bottom, for Alan Hancock. It shows the uh, completed projects and uh, gives you more information about our uh, project as well. And then next one. Um, I just wanted to add in there real quickly, uh, CC ECHO is a consortium of four California community colleges. West Hills is, uh, I guess you would call fiscal lead on this. Uh, we are also working with Allen Hancock College, which is near the Central Coast, um, College of the Canyons, which is in Southern California, and College of Marin, which is in Northern California. Yeah, and when, when we were uh, developing the uh, initial application for it, what we looked at is, uh, and why there, there's four colleges spread across the state. Um, we have uh, large institutions, small institutions, um, and uh, rural and um, urban, and they're all four HSIs. 
So the, uh, the timeline, uh, January, we got a late start. There was quite a bit of a uh, front loading, trying to get things developed, our processes, working with the different um, grants offices and budgets for different colleges. So it took a, probably about six months really to get rolling, but we'll be rolling up until December of 2023 when we hope to have all of those 20 uh, um, projects completed. And uh, there, it consists of OER textbooks, um, Canvas courses, ancillaries, translations, um, and uh, revisions. And again, Kelsey will go over those uh, pretty thoroughly in her uh, part of the presentation. So um, each year, we, uh, and we began with as thorough as we could come up with a gap analysis of each one of our colleges um, and to see which was the most highly enrolled courses especially for underserved students that needed uh, OER creation. And that's where we started. Um, and then, of course, we started adding in the other components, which is the DEI framework. Um, and if you're not familiar with the uh, Academic Senate of California, um, they have a very nice OERI, Open Educational Resources uh, Initiative page. There's a lot of resources in there. So we use that and along with OpenStax framework to develop ours. There's a standardized rubric for peer review. Um, and data collection, I'll talk more about that in a bit, but the RP group um, is a uh, group here in California that we're working with in order to get uh, as much uh, data that we can from this uh, project. And the OER specialists, um, they're available as well. And I think that's on the next slide here. So the OER specialists, this is kind of a, a, a nice little perk for the authors of the textbooks because these are students that, um, and Kelsey will talk about the training course that they go through, but these are students or former students um, that can aid and assist the faculty members in um, kind of fine tuning and some of the more tedious things that go along with um, creation of OER textbooks. And that allows the faculty members to focus on the content and the creation. And we feel that uh, this is not only valuable to the faculty members creating the textbooks, but it's also valuable to the students who will then be fully versed in OER as they move on to universities or into the workforce um, so that they will be familiar with OER, plus they get uh, job skills in working with these types of uh, systems. Okay. And this is the good stuff. Yep. So now we're going to go into uh, the project showcase. So I'm going to go over the projects that have completed from our first kind of I guess the first half of the grant, and then go over or highlight a couple of our projects that are in progress. So we just started kind of our year two or the last half of this grant. And we have, gosh, probably 18 or more projects in progress right now. So it's pretty exciting. So similar to uh, what Ron was just talking about, one of our first projects that completed was an OER specialist training course. So um, College of the Canyons has a great group of OER specialists or OER team. This is a group of former and current students that work um, with their faculty on the things that Ron mentioned on the previous slide. So formatting um, accessibility, finding open licensed image, images, um, things like that. So what they did with the help of their instructional designer, Helen Graves, and then of course, James and Joy over at College of the Canyons, they created a OER specialist training course. So if you have people on your college campus, either a group of students, maybe classified staff, or maybe even faculty or librarians that are working with faculty on helping them create OER, this is a great course for them to go through. This is also a great course. Let me go to the next slide that has a screenshot. Um, this is a great course for anyone kind of starting out in OER and kind of curating OER materials or creating OER materials. Um, the screenshot shows the modules of the, of the course, which is a Canvas course, by the way. So um, if you do not use Canvas on your college, you can create a free account and you should be able to go into Canvas Commons and browse at least, uh, maybe download for your uh, LMS. But uh, anyway, the modules, uh, they go over getting started, uh, what you would initially want to go over with faculty in the, the meeting as an OER specialist, finding OER, citing, uh, formatting accessibility, uh, review, and, and like the finalization of distributing materials. Um, 
all of these projects I'm going to go over, I have a QR code at the top right. If you have a link, I don't know if the link to the slides has been put in chat, but it should be uploaded to the actual schedule. Um, you can click on the QR code and it will take you, it's actually a link too. So that's our OER specialist course available in Canvas Commons or just follow the link. Um, our other a very exciting project that completed during the summer is an ethnic studies textbook. This one was particularly important to the California Community Colleges because we have a new um, GE requirement, which is run as an area F. Um, I so. eth okay, I get mixed up with the letters. So it's an ethnic studies requirement, meaning all students need to take an ethnic studies um, course during their time at the community colleges. Um, so this is the textbook for that course. The title is Our Lives and Ethnic Studies Primer. It was written by Dr. Beer Kennedy and Rowena Bermio at West Hills College. Um, I have listed a couple of the uh, chapters in this textbook. They kind of call them modules. So I did modules last chapters. They try to uh, really highlight kind of some unspoken histories and unheard voices in this textbook. And um, we also, not only are the authors uh, women of color, but the contributors, there are little, uh, I guess, call out boxes or personal stories within the chapters of this textbook. Those were all um, people of color as well. And um, adjunct faculty, not all of them. One of them was a full-time faculty that just just getting started. So we tried to pull in these voices that are sometimes left out of um, OER or just uh, textbooks in general, and um, they were all compensated for their work as well. Um, and then coming soon, this textbook, it will be translated to Spanish. That is one of our next projects. Um, it should be done maybe around this time next year. So we have our English version here, the link or QR code is up there, and then a, a Spanish version will be coming. So um, CC Echo is partnered with California, not sorry, uh, not California, Community College Consortium for OER. Um, I think Una is here with us today. Um, they did a wonderful case study with the authors of the Ethnic Studies Primer. And then um, just, I think last week, OEG Voices did a podcast episode with the authors, which is fantastic. So I've linked both of those QR codes um, so you can hear about the author's experiences, what motivated them to get involved with this project. So uh, the next project that just finalized um, a couple of weeks ago was our human sexuality textbook. Um, the title of that is Sexuality, the Self and Society. This was written by Susan Raman at um, College of Marin. Now this textbook was uh, written by Susan, but she also worked with, uh, I think five students, multiple students, current and former. Um, I think one sex educator, a couple of medical doctors and a nurse practitioner. So this book has the actual medical science and the biology, but it also has elements from sociology and psychology all wrapped up into one textbook. So this book may be able to use for multiple courses. I know at Marin, this is a sociology course, I believe, but at other colleges, human sexuality is a psychology course. So um, I've listed a couple of the chapters there. So it goes anywhere from what is human sexuality to pleasure to gender, sexual orientation, and then into the contraceptive, uh, like the actual biology, the sexual health, um, abortion, STIs, that sort of thing. Um, also, a quick note, all of these are currently being harvested by Libertex, um, so they should be in there as well soon. So they're up on our CC Echo website um, and hopefully available other places as well. Also by Susan Raman um, from College of Marin is a structural racism guidebook that's titled A People's History of Structural Racism in Academia from Administration of Justice to Zoology. So let me pull up my notes. This one um, is an introduction to how structural racism has affected and impacted uh, 
42, I couldn't list them all, disciplines in higher education. There's some of them on the slide there. Um, and she, she talks about the impact that structural racism has had on each discipline and then highlights great thinkers. So uh, women, people of color, um, people belonging to the LGBTQ community, those people that are often left out or overlooked in these disciplines and highlights those. And so if you're just kind of getting into the diversity, equity, inclusion type thing, and you're looking to redesign either your OER or your course, this is a great resource to look at, look up your discipline and get some ideas about how you can integrate these kind of overlooked and unspoken voices in your uh, curriculum. And another project that completed over the summer was a, I wouldn't call it a textbook, it's kind of an e-text slash website or a web resource for a computer organization. This course I have found is called all sorts of things at all sorts of colleges. So it's kind of a begin, beginning computing course. Um, the author is Mark Kozel at uh, Allen Hancock College. And um, I've listed the resource sections here um, just in case you're looking to match this to a particular computer course on your college. So he goes into the introduction to computers, which thankfully includes diversity. He has a whole section on the breakdown of the the people that make up the jobs in the computer and mathematics um, industry and really calls out how there is a lack of women and people of color in that industry and then talks about things like black girl black girls code and some other things that are trying to get um, more people into that discipline um, so the resource sections are introdu introduction foundations and assembly this, uh, he used a website generator tool called ViewPress, and it's written in Markdown and then stored in GitHub. So if you're familiar with GitHub, you can copy it, make all the um, edits you need to, and then put it on your website, essentially. So hoping to get this one in LibreText as well. Uh, the format's a little bit tricky to translate, I think, but we'll see. And then this is one that we're super excited about, um, just finished up like last, last week. Um, it's an American government audiobook. And the audiobook is the audio version of the OpenStax American government third edition. Um, and the narration was done by Brian Barrick, who is faculty member, political science faculty member at LA Harbor and a former student of his. She is now a um, student at Long Beach, I believe, um, Sarah. So they uh, translated this book into audio. All of this book is over 900 pages. So it's a whole lot of hours of audio. Um, as of the 10th of this month and without any advertising or I don't know, putting it out on Twitter or sharing the link or anything, Students have already found this. The podcast has been downloaded and streamed about 1,400 times. YouTube has over 10 or 6,000 views, and it has been listened to close to 2,000 hours already on YouTube. He just put this onto a website that is working most of the time. Sometimes you might get a uh, malicious content um, error warning for some reason. So that's in progress, but as of a couple minutes before this presentation, it worked. It's um, www.openaudio.us. And he is going to put all the, the chapters are linked there. Um, you can also search for OpenStax on Spotify, Apple, uh, YouTube, and Google Podcasts, and it should uh, pop up. Um, the website, he'll be putting some instructor content there as well. And then also taken from the website were some student feedback or comments that he gotten he had gotten from YouTube. So the first one says, this audiobook was so helpful. I have a learning disability and learn better when I read the text while also listening to it. I hate having to use text-to-speech software because of how it sounds. However, this was amazing. Thank you. And the other comment says, thank you so much for making this. I'm a student who works, works 12 hour shifts Having this allows me to listen to the text and then go home and read it. 
it has helped me immensely and my grade shows it. I wish I had the same opportunity in my other classes. So that's awesome. And I was also going to mention um, CC Echo really puts an emphasis on students at Hispanic serving institutions. A lot of our students are either part-time, they're working, taking care of family. A lot of time is spent commuting and audio versions of OER are fantastic. It can save them time like you saw in these two comments here. It also helps students with disabilities um, because they can read and listen to the same time. And students that where English may not be their first language, they can um, listen to it while reading, which can kind of help with comprehension. So hold on. So we have a bunch more projects to come. Here's a list of, uh, I think most of them, some of them are kind of up in the air right now. I didn't include them on the list, but our projects to come range from English critical thinking with the Afrofuturism lens, uh, our spin on it, um, introduction to kinesiology. We have a couple of art textbooks from um, 2, 2D design and basic drawing oceanography, American literature, criminal evidence, et cetera. And most of these, if not all of them, should be completing in the fall of next year. So just a preview of a couple of our projects that are coming. We have a microscopy slide image collection and a microbiology lab manual that's in progress. Um, the authors are from the College of Marin. And the description would be, this is a free and openly, openly licensed microscopy lab collection and lab manual. And this is the little blurb or description I got from the author. They mentioned that nearly all biology textbooks focus solely on co contributors from the Western European or American people of Caucasian descent. They plan to address these issues by including lab ex experiments that come from non-white cultures. They will also include sections that acknowledge and address racial disparities in healthcare and the epidemiology of infectious disease. So you are able to check out what progress they have made so far in OER Commons. If you go to OER Commons and then groups and search for College of Marin, or you can click on this link here, you can see all of their slides that they've uploaded already. And these are high quality slides um, and they are free and openly licensed. So they can be used in probably multiple courses, not just microbiology. And so we are very excited about that one. And another one, CC Echo is particularly um, excited to work with because we are from, all of us are from California and this consortium is finally an OER textbook for California geography. So the author is Jeremy Patrick from College of the Canyons. He is, uh, I believe he has a written, has written OER for the geosciences already, so you may be familiar with his name. The textbook chapters that he outlined that will be in this California geography book range from the survey of California to climate to the water crisis as water is a resource of conflict to all the different regional areas of California. And what's cool about Jeremy is that he works with a student to film, you can see the screenshot here on the right, is a picture of him. I can't remember where he's at, but he films these um, kind of virtual field trips for his students, and these will be integrated in this textbook as well. And so he goes to a variety of different places in California, and so the students that are either too far or can't make it out to these areas can see for themselves what this area actually looks like and kind of experience a field trip sort of in a virtual way. And the uh, last project that I will highlight today is criminal evidence. Um, some of you might be familiar with the administration of justice kind of being a lagging area in the open education community. And I have worked with this author before. He's actually authored a couple administration of justice textbooks in the, in the past. His name is George Cartwright. He is faculty at Madeira, Madeira Community College. And these are the textbook chapters, some of them, I couldn't list all of them. So this textbook will include the history of evidence, the declaration of independence, um, the classification of evidence, witness, self-incrimination, um, hearsay, 
et cetera. So he's, I believe the criminal evidence OER that's out there, I'm only aware of one, I believe it was from British Columbia. So it's not good, but it doesn't help us in the United States as much. So we're excited to be working with George on this and go for it, Ron. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, it's always nice to go back and look at all those projects, it's exciting stuff. Well, one of the things that uh, Kelsey and I, we've worked on uh, other grants dealing with uh, OER and zero textbook cost degrees. And uh, we, we never really gathered enough data and can you ever really have enough data? So one of the things that when we were putting uh, uh, echo together was is that we wanted to make sure that we captured as much and the highest quality data that we could. So we uh, contracted with the RP group. Um, that's a research and planning group for California community colleges. And um, they also do professional development. So um, they've been helping us along the way uh, all from the very beginning on how to uh, capture the best data pos possible, both qualitative and quantitative. And um, one of the things was the uh, faculty interviews. Um, they interview all of the faculty that are going through and working on, uh, most of the faculty um, that are working on these projects to find out how um, it can be better in the future for other faculty members. Um, and uh, one of the things that came directly out of that was the, uh, uh, the author guidebook, kind of a, a guidebook on how to go through and uh, help um, uh, upcoming authors create their uh, textbooks more efficiently. Um, student surveys, um, those surveys um, initially, they're, it's, in, it's in initial stages right now, um, be launched. We were going to do focus groups, but because of the pandemic and the ramifications and all that, that focus groups, we kind of mixed that and went with uh, just the straight surveys. Um, and it's really on a student perspective uh, of what they know, um, and how we can improve OER from a student perspective, because really what it really boils down to is how beneficial it's going to be to the students. Um, and a lot of the, uh, the data is uh, uh, the outcomes, of course, you know, the, the uh, success, retention, um, all of the things that you would try to gather, but we're really trying to gather that as much as possible at the four institutions. And as you can see there, um, the impact isn't huge at this point, but um, it's moving in the right direction. And we think that at the end, when we have our final report, we'll have uh, a lot of valuable data uh, to, to share out. Yeah. Let's see. Are we gonna cover that, Kelsey, or? Uh, yeah, I could talk to it real quick if you'd like. Um, so Ron mentioned this on the, the last slide, but out of the data we got from the faculty interviews, this is faculty that, that uh, completed projects in the first round of this grant. Um, we got a lot of great input and that kind of inspired me to make an author guidebook because they were, they were uh, wanting more of that wraparound support up front and kind of working, they wanted to work more of a, as a cohort or a team. And some of them weren't always aware of what resources and support was available to them as they were creating their OER. So um, we've created this CC Echo author guidebook, which of course you can use for your own purposes. It's specific to our grant, but has things that would be helpful for any grant or any project that's supporting OER authors and publishing. Um, this is kind of a brand new thing for a lot of people. Like Publishing textbooks is difficult in general, but OER, there's a whole lot of things to consider when you've got open education um, in there as well. So we uh, cover just kind of grant basics and then project scoping. So um, building a timeline and um, licensing structure, building up your team, technical assistance and tools that can be used. And then we also go into our peer review process, which you can adapt. There's the peer review guide and our actual peer review rubric in this uh, document. And then we also go into sustainability as well. So that is our guidebook. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that uh, after your one, I think you, could, you just covered most of this, right, uh, Kelsey? Um, 
Yeah, that was basically a lot of our lessons learned came from yeah. those RP group uh, interviews. Yeah. Um, the uh, conductor, I think, is an important one. Um, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, a lot of people are familiar with that UC Davis project, um, but uh, it's, I don't know, is it complete or is he still working on it? Do you know, Kelsey? It's yeah, it's complete. Uh, we, we've we decided to implement LibreText Conductor as a project management tool this time around, especially because we have, I don't know, 18 to 20 projects all going at once. And it's it's myself and Ron and our, our leads. And it's a little difficult to keep track of everybody, all the teams. So Conductor has been amazing as far as keeping track of who's working on what. There's a little discussion board area so you can have little discussions. And there's a nice timeline so we can keep our, our instructors on uh, task and check in with them. And it's been very helpful. Um, we've included some of the resource links that I've covered and that Ron has covered. So um, that there's a link to two case studies that CCC OER has done for us. They've done the ethnic studies case study and then another one on the OER specialist training course. Um, under that is uh, the California Academic Senate's OERI's framework for, it's, they've, uh, acronym is IDEA, so in, inclusivity, diversity, equity, and I believe anti-racism or accessibility, either one, it should be both. Um, that framework was fantastic. Our authors use it to kind of shape and uh, what they're writing and keep, uh, keep them on track as far as DEI goes. Um, there's two links that you, um, or sorry, one link, the peer review rubric. It's also in the guidebook link below, but the rubric that we're using that came from the California Academic Senate's OERI's rubric that they were using for their project. So we tweaked it a little bit and um, are using it for our peer reviews. And then uh, listed again is our homepage. So it's uh, hosted by Alan Hancock. But so all of our resources as they finish will be linked there. Any presentation recordings, um, anything that we think people can find helpful that are developed out of the funding for this grant will be listed on our website. Um, all right, we have, what time is it? Uh, seven minutes or so for questions. So I'm going to pull up this slide in case you need to get in contact or would like to get in contact with any of us. Um, there's our info there. I'm gonna check the chat. Feel free to unmute as well if you have any questions. I have a quick question if that's all right. Yeah, go for it. Um, I was love all the textbooks that the people are um, folks are producing and these are all really lovely topics that uh, that people are invested. In. I want to ask um, how did you guys coordinate the peer review process? I know that you guys mentioned a peer review guide, but mm -hmm. how did you coordinate um, folks reviewing each other, especially with such niche and specialized topics? Yeah, so for the peer review, I actually looked to, there was a guide, I think it was, oh uh, gosh, I think it's linked in our peer review guide, but I looked at another guide on essentially how to do peer review and we basically came up with, we'll let the authors decide what's best for their project on how they want to do peer review. So whether that's blind or they pick the peer reviewers or CC Echo picks the peer reviewers, um, all we request is that they fill out the rubric that we have. It's linked in our, maybe linked in chat or it's linked in our document there. Um, the peer reviewers will fill out this rubric and there'll be at least two of them. Uh, one of them, should be in academia at least. Um, so that peer review process is pretty open. We wanted it to work for our authors. Um, so yeah, I think that's mostly what I can, can say. To, does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention one of our, the computer organization one is I think our only 
well, our criminal evidence too, our, our career technical education. So with that computer one, we actually had somebody from the field um, in computer science, not in higher education, come and review that textbook for us as an independent contractor, which was pretty cool. So whenever we can do that, we, we try to get people from the industry in to review as well. Um, there is a question in the chat on how do you decide on the theme of which to work and develop a project? So every year, I, I believe Ron mentioned our gap analysis at the beginning of the presentation. Every year um, during summer, we are doing a gap analysis where we look at our colleges, the four of our colleges, what courses are high enrolled and what courses of that list are not implementing OER. And then we're also looking at other colleges and sources. Um, we also I like to go to the California Academic Senate's resource site and sort of scope out where are there are holes in OER resources. And then we put out a call to our colleges, seeing if faculty are interested in writing in those, those areas. And we got a ton of interest. So sometimes we'll get interest from areas outside of what we have listed. So we gave our faculty a list invited authors and we got some that were not on that list so they basically they need to justify why they would like to create an OER in that area so there has to be a gap um, if there is OER already existing what are they doing to make it different in some way or um, if they're going to revise it how are they going to help it fit with that DEI or the diversity equity inclusion lens Basically, what are they going to do that's different? And so they need to justify that. Um, Jennifer, that's a good question. Um, she asks when the English Critical Thinking Latinx Focus course will be available. That one is actually complete, but we, um, myself and Elle, who I think is here from College of Marin, we're doing some ac accessibility tweaks on that one right now. So it can be fully ready to go and then we will post that. So um, I can share, I was gonna say I can share on Twitter. I don't know if everyone's on Twitter, but when that course, as soon as that course is ready to go and fully accessible, we will um, announce that on, <laughs> awesome. Okay, and that'll be on our website as well. We're hoping um, it's in Canvas. It's a Canvas course right now. Um, I'll put my handle in the chat. There's a Canvas course right now, but we, Elle and I are thinking of trying to get it out of that format. So we'll have a course, but maybe also an EPUB or something for people that aren't using Canvas, just to make it more usable by more people. Are there any other questions? Um, I'll just read Elle's comment out loud. At College of Marin, the authors can recommend a peer reviewer in their own subject. The college can then assign another peer reviewer, peer reviewer outside the discipline. That seems to work best for our process. And yeah, like Elle said, we're at West Hills. We also do something. A lot of the instructors creating OER like to have somebody in their discipline or related, and then somebody totally outside of their discipline, which has been really helpful for the ethnic studies textbook, that one we actually had, I think it's four peer reviewers. I was one of them, which was the person kind of outside of, I didn't, um, I guess, have experience in the ethnic studies field. We had a history instructor, English and sociology, I believe. So having somebody outside like myself, is kind of like having a student view the textbook. Um, and I think that's super important. So having somebody that doesn't have experience with the subject um, that can kind of come in with fresh eyes, um, but also a lot of people like having English instructors as peer reviewers just to make sure their grammar and punctuation is good too. Um, all right, so we're wrapping up here. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and check out our website for all the resources as they finish. We will post them to the CC Echo website. All Thanks, right. everybody.